Hey guys, so welcome back. So not only is a potential first lady to be accused of being a former bar hostess girl, Han Yeso, that famous actress model, she has been recently attacked and accused by a very controversial and famous right winger slash entertainment reporter slash YouTuber as being a former room salon girl and a host of other things. They have been on a tear right now. They have been in a public cat fight and that's what we're going to talk about today. So I want to say about two months ago, I saw an advertisement pop up on my Instagram of a brand new luxury building that's coming up and you can buy some um, pre units or something like that. And there was this pretty girl in the advertisements and I was like, she looks familiar, but you know, I guess I'll never know who she is because I'm too lazy to look her up. Nope, turns out I got to know exactly who she was, Han Yesul, because right after that there was a flood of articles saying that she started to get into this huge controversy about her boyfriend, a Lamborghini, Burning Sun, drugs, and whether she was a room salon girl back in Los Angeles. All this stuff. So who is Han Yesul? If you guys don't know, she made her debut back in the early 2000s. I think 2001, she won the SBS Supermodel Contest. So despite her look, she actually is a little bit older. She's like 39 years old. And she's like one of those beauties that has been able to adapt with the times. So that's why she looks a lot younger than her age. And she's been a model. She's been an actress. And she's kind of gone in and out of different types of entertainment roles and so you've probably seen her face she was in the movie penny pincher she was in tatsa she was in birth of a beauty she's done tv she's done movies and she's done modeling and recently she's done a lot of youtube so she's very versatile she's kind of like one of those entertainers that's more of a hustler and she always seems to be able to do her own thing. What she's mostly known for, though, is just being really, 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 really pretty, if there's such a thing. But that's the thing that she's kind of known for is that uh, people just like looking at her and that she just kind of has this grace and this charm and... She's one of the people who has really just been able to transition really well onto social media. Like a person who went from the old world of entertainment because she is like one of the old guard. If you started in the 2000s, you're the old guard. And a lot of those people could not make the transition to social media, but she just went right over and I think even this guy that's attacking her is saying like she's in the top 10 of like the Korean traditional entertainers that just transitioned right over to social media so now she's just like you know I don't really need to you know do any kind of traditional stuff like I can just do everything on my own well doing everything on her own triggered this certain reporter it was this instagram photo in particular of her and her lamborghini or lambo as you guys in the younger generation seem to be calling it these days so let's talk about this guy who seems to have some issues now the reason why i've been a little bit hesitant to cover this story is mainly because of this guy this guy used to work for pretty much reputable news outlets. You guys won't really recognize it if you're not in Korea, but Newsys and Sports World, they're pretty much mainstream, very kind of like high click rate um, entertainment and sports 
uh, sites. So when you are actually an entertainment reporter for those two sites, you're actually a pretty good one. So he is a guy that really would get direct sources really well. And then though he linked up with this weird YouTube channel that gives me QAnon vibes, the Kados Hero Institute, that's just a little weird. So I just thought like, okay, this guy's a little bit weird. And then he gives me creepy vibes. Like he's always about to kind of like either yell or cry. So I was just always creeped out by him. However, however, Good news is whether you trust the information and if the information is really rare. And you know, that all makes the mm -mm, the elements of something real juicy. And I do believe that people do go to him with receipts. He does probably get very good, accurate information, primary sources, primary conversations, and I do believe that he does get the truth. He does not use all of it. And it's up to a bit of our judgment to see if like, if everybody who goes to him is actually credible because he is reporting on some of the seediness of Korean life. So not all those people are quite credible types of people. But the thing that I do realize now that does give him some credibility is if you want revenge, you go to him. Because why would all these people talk, right? And the common denominator in all of these stories, as, as I've been waiting to report on this and watching to see the common thread of, because I was always asking, I was like, but what makes this credible? Why would all these people talk? Like, why would somebody give this information? All of them were pissed. They wanted to get their side of the story out. None of these people were happy with the counterparty that they were spilling their guts about. They wanted revenge. So he is the go-to guy. If you're like, I am mad. I want to get back at that person. And he's the name that pops up in everybody's head. If you want to turn your revenge into some sort of news article or make sure that public shame can come from it, you call this guy. His name is Kim Yong-ho. And... He won't always use your information right away. I think he hears and sees a lot more than he actually talks about. And what he sees and hears, I think, is probably two to three times or ten times more disgusting than he actually shares with us in the public. And maybe that is part of why his face always looks so disgusted or he's about to cry the other theory and i don't really like to look at him too long or try to dwell too much on him so i don't really know too much about him so if you know more about him can you please comment the reason why i give him some credibility is that i do think he is on a social mission and i do think he does have a moral compass with why he is reporting on celebrity scandals I do believe him when he says, I am not trying to knock down individual celebrities for the sake of destroying their lives. I am trying to knock down the moral corruption or decay that their lives represent at that moment. And I do believe him in that because I feel like somewhere along in his personal life, something happened where he suffered. And I get the feeling it has something to do with, and this is totally my projection, because, but he always harps 
on some sort of fraud that comes from a bar girl manipulating a family. So basically like a bar girl, bar guy latching on to somebody, taking the money that should be going to the family and skipping out on it. And then, so I kind of see like him as the young kid, I don't know, maybe can't get any shoes or food or go to summer camp because, you know, daddy gave the money to the pretty girl from the bar kind of get that sense and he's trying to maybe make up for that somehow and then also kind of fix society okay so what is the fight what is the big deal this picture with her and her purple lamborghini and he hates it when celebrities brag and flex on their social media especially if it seems as if they are being way over the top with materialism plus having some sort of romantic entanglement with some sort of gigolo or some sort of tart that they met at some sort of nighttime establishment and He's basically trying to call out if you are one of these cougar women dating a guy that's 10 years younger than you, that's probably just in it to try to steal your money. He's going to call you out on that. If you're like this older guy dating this little tartlet from the, you know, drinking establishment that you think you're going to start dating, but she's just in it to try to steal your money, he's going to call you out on it. So in order to do this, though, he starts nitpicking at your life. So first of all, he's saying like, that's not really your Lamborghini. You really didn't give it to him. And then she gets into this like she shouldn't have responded, but she did. She's like, of course, it's mine. And he's like, no, I checked it. And it's it's registered under your company name. And so it's not really yours. It's the company's. But then at the same time, it's like, well, she's the last person you really want to get into a fight with over that because that is like a standard practice in Korea to buy expensive foreign cars with company registrations. Celebrities are probably the last person on the list to go after for that, you know, talk to the Korean government or something. That is not the main thing. The main thing is he is attacking her boyfriend, not just because he's younger, but because he is claiming that they are lying to the public. He claims that he's basically like an escort, like a, a bar boy. And she says that, oh, no, no, I just met him at a bar. And he's like, yeah, but what kind of a bar? And she says that, oh, it's like a karaoke, like an open bar karaoke. And he was just there. And he was like, BS. And I also interviewed people who work at that so-called karaoke. So he claims that this karaoke is essentially like a place where women go and it's like super exclusive. You can't even like go into the place unless you know somebody and there's like a separate secret floor. There's like a, even if, even though it's super exclusive, there's like a regular person's floor and then like a super exclusive other floor where they have all these hot boys and stuff like, you know, sitting with you and like, I don't know, doing whatever, like, like singing with you or I guess if it's karaoke and those guys are there working. You know, it's kind of like the opposite of a room salon. A room salon is essentially like a bunch of girls that work there and like men get to pick girls to sit with and um, they're the pretty girls that work there. So this is the opposite. This is for women who want pretty boys to sit with. And so that explains the age difference. Now, what this reporter does not like is that he knows the game. He knows that it's not just about these pretty boys, pretty guys who work at these establishments, maybe having it lead to, you know, selling their bodies. There's a whole other world and a system where they start manipulating these 
clients, these people who come in and really rope in big money, getting hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions of dollars in cars, houses, stocks, and like get involved in all sorts of manipulation, all sorts of types of like fraud and way too many things. And that's what he is really against because he thinks that actually this leads to the damage of a country because most of the people who can afford to go to these places are people who have some positions in society and still like i said in the last video for some reason these people still like who have important positions in society like to meet there they say it's like for business they like to meet there and a lot of the time these people who do go there they've kind of had sheltered existences you know gone to good schools and so this is like the first time i guess in their lives maybe starting when they start you know working making money or whatnot where they can kind of have a little bit of licentious lifestyle so they become easy easy targets for these types of people you know the because who works at the bars who works you know by sweet talking sweet looking you know people who are really street smart they're not just gonna end after like you know one night they're gonna be able to rope you in and especially easy targets so that i understand why this guy is this reporter is really on a mission to sort of kind of bring down the influence of these bar boys and bar girls however Hanya Sil is totally denying it. She, she's like, you know, he's, he's just a guy that I met. He's just a hot little, you know, guy. What's wrong with dating a younger guy? Well, he's like, then why are you paying him through your company? Like you're giving him an allowance. And she's like, well, you know, I just hire him because like he helps me around with the company and stuff like that. And he's like, mm-hmm. So if you want to know the Korean word for it, it's called chebi or like a sparrow because that's like the old, old term, like maybe like in the 70s. That's when like these guys, they would kind of hit on these women at the discotheque or cola tech. I think that's what they called it back then. That's when the guys would just like kind of be stationed like, you know, birds. They'd be stationed there. And then they would like hit on the women who would be at the club and kind of like milk them. Now, these are the more advanced, you know, they're not sparrows these days, man. They are professional now with like six packs, tattoos, everything like they got it going on. And so you got to be careful. So he is going after Hanya Sil hard because he's saying now and like I said, it's not just sparrows like, you know, kind of like trying to milk women for like, I don't know, maybe extra cab fare instead of taking the bus. He's saying like this lifestyle now has gotten so licentious that now it is drugs and drugs is very serious in Korea in terms of like there's a zero tolerance policy and they say that this world is riddled with drugs that like after hours you know when they kind of close these like karaoke places like everybody's doing drugs and that like they would go to the clubs and then that there's like photo evidence that he's gotten and like evidence of like conversations that he has that she is a habitual user and her boyfriend is also heavily involved in that world and so he's basically saying like i know you go to burning sun i know you go to um the other after hours club that is associated with burning sun and so she is being accused of all of this now she has been like fighting back you know with her social media and he's saying like no you're just digging yourself into a greater hole honey and she's like no i'm gonna get a lawyer i'm lawyering up i'm about to sue you and he's like sue me do it because he's like you know the last time that happened and that was with yg yg with the whole burning sun incident with sungi 
The reason why we know so much about Burning Sun is because of this reporter. He says that through that lawsuit, he was covering like a smaller part of the case and that through that lawsuit he was able to find a ton more information so he was just like thank you thank you for suing me because like you like made me more famous and like you made me get a lot more information about this incident and so he's like sue me because like i'm gonna get a lot more information about you and so she hasn't done it yet and he even said like you know what i'm not gonna press it uh, you just need to just kind of admit and just stop it here and keep what you got. Just keep, just admit what you did wrong and keep what you got because if you chill, you can maintain your image. But if you keep fighting me, you're going to lose it all. And, you know, he's, and I kind of believe him because he says like, I can't say all the stuff I say unless I got the receipts. And he keeps, you know, whenever he keeps getting pressed, he shows more and more receipts. And of course the receipts could be fake or the people giving it to him could be giving fake receipts, but he's willing to take those receipts to court. And he's willing to bet his uh, reputation and future on the validity of those receipts and trust the sources that he's getting them from. I also don't really want to harp too much on all of the rumors. I don't even think that it's that good to, you know, bring her down. And I mean, so what if she had to do, you know, some of those things to get by? But I do also now really kind of understand what he's trying to do where he is trying to say like don't flaunt the image and set a bad example for other people to follow so i kind of get the sense because he's only doing this once you flaunt it on social media and he even kind of said this in public where like he doesn't want his children, he doesn't want daughters of Korea to say like, oh, I want to be like this actress. Because then he'd be like, oh, well, if you want to be like that actress, you're going to have to go, you know, to the bar and sell your body. So as long as you're doing it maybe in private and you're not setting the example for everybody then maybe i think he's willing to kind of let it pass but i think once you kind of like make a show out of it and start normalizing this behavior i think that's when he starts attacking people so i think that's what he's doing and so he's been doing that with hanya sir but now that she's kind of quieted down he's now going after one of her friends and her friend was flexing with her younger, you know, she's also an actress with her like, you know, younger boy toy. And I think he's doing the same thing. Okay, so that's pretty much a, I would say, a respectful version of the fight between this reporter and Han Yesul. If you've been wondering like what this hubbub about Han Yesul was without really trying to resurface all of the bad stuff about her. It's just more about this man's crusade to try to not normalize some of this kind of crazy behavior that happens, you know, in the nightlife of Korea that is now seeping into, you know, as we've seen, the presidential campaign, the business life, family life. And so he kind of wants to put a kibosh on it, at least on Instagram. At least on Instagram, you know, he's trying to say, stop flexing so that my daughter, you know, doesn't have to grow up and want to go to the bar and start, you know, doing all sorts of stuff like that. <laughs> all right, guys, we'll have more updates on perhaps this and other stuff 
indefinitely more about the SJM mystery. All right, guys, talk to you later. Bye. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Love you.